Has anyone else tried the forward test? Submitted by Braytendo. There's only one rule. Exit your home and go forward. It seems so simple just saying it, you'd hardly think it was a test at all. I never really gave it much thought until one fateful eavesdropping. I was squishing a bread roll into a ball at my uni's cafeteria as the table next to me argued about their childish scores. 18 miles, Megan. I made it 18 miles without stopping. That has to be a local record. But you went around the houses, Alex. Well, I wasn't going to go through them. I popped the little bread ball into my mouth, and something obvious clicked from those words. It's in the name of the game. You can't just go forward until it's inconvenient for you. It has to be truly forward. If there's a wall, you climb it. If there's a river, you swim across. And if there's a building, you really have to open a door and go through. No matter how awkward or dangerous. I'd known about this silly game since I was old enough to listen, and even attempted it a few times when I was old enough to hear all the superstitions, but I never once tried to play it the right way. I have to assume there aren't many that have. A sudden slap to my back made the bread ball fall out of my mouth. My friend Cat was struck with inspiration. I'm going to play it for real this time, Bray. No going back. And so she did. There was nothing more to it. Cat never backed down from a challenge. Even when she really should have. I've called enough ambulances to know, but I guess that's how a tough girl gets good at climbing, surviving, record breaking, and being one manipulative fucker. If she was missing that last trait, maybe I'd have talked her out of it. But no going back was her sworn mantra. That was two weeks ago, and so much has happened. There were too many texts that didn't make any sense, and couldn't possibly be true, but there's one thing that matches up. Cat went forward. Every time she shared her map location, it was on a perfect straight line. Before I get into the messages, I'm going to share every superstition I've collected from friends about the forward test. I want to know if they match up to what any of you might have heard. If there's something I'm missing, it could better explain the last message she sent, so please let me know. Well, then, no going back. Pack for as long as you plan to play, and only take the test alone. If you bring someone with you, they'll know you're cheating. And you don't want to be caught cheating. The first 20 doors you go through will require nothing more than a clever excuse to enter. From that point forward, you may need a clever excuse to leave. If the building you must enter has more than 10 floors, always go to the top floor before exiting. You won't want to miss what might be waiting there just for you. Count your doors and find a way to measure your miles. You'll be glad you did when things no longer look the size that you remember them being. The farther you go, the more people will try to lead you astray. An elderly woman in need of a favor, or an old friend who wants to get coffee may appear. If you're only 10 miles deep, it's still safe to leave the path. The test will end there. Any point after 10 miles, do not stray and do not engage with those outside the buildings, no matter what incredible, or horrible, things they show you. The 30th building you enter will be blue. If it is any other color, turn around and go back immediately. Once you enter the blue building, you are a guest of the home. Remove your shoes at the door and bow to all you meet. There will be a feast of all your favorite foods readily offered to you. Kindly decline all but one offering. Do not leave without eating it. If they bring you your shoes as you exit the back door, it is safe to leave. If at any point on your journey you see the squinting man painted to look like the wall behind him, exit the current building or enter the next one as fast as you can without making a sound. If he hears you, he will open his eyes, and there is truly no advice for what happens next. If you must set up camp along your path, do not stay in any spot for more than 6 hours. After 50 doors, this will be reduced to 40 minutes. You'll know it's time to move on when a certain sound starts. It doesn't need description, you'll know it when you hear it. In one of the buildings, you will open the door to a white hallway that appears impossibly long. Do not enter it. Close the door and open it again and the hallway will be shorter. Continue doing this until the hallway is no more than 10 feet long. Be sure to do this quickly before the hallway resets. If you open the door to the long hallway and see something running toward you at an alarming speed, close the door and do not open it again. You have exactly one chance to close it. The thing that runs will never stop chasing if you open the door even one more time. Go back the way you came. Do not attempt the test again. At either 300 miles or 100 doors, you will find a broken table holding a rusty old pin. If you choose to accept the pin, you must never take it off for more than one hour. If this is maintained, you will see good fortune. The journey is now over. Return to your home. Do not continue going forward. Nobody ever has. 
they will not allow it. These were all the superstitions surrounding the test that I could remember. After Kat's test started, her early text messages all seemed to confirm that those were nothing more than lame stories from bored teens. And then she shared her adventures of trying to sweet talk her way inside people's houses. Stuff like she needed to make a phone call, she was there for an inspection, or sometimes she would just make a mad dash for their back door or parkour right over their roof. She even had the cops called on her twice, but she managed to escape both times. In the beginning, I was actually excited for new messages. It sounded like she was having a blast and living life exactly as I could always expect from her. Wild and carefree. That sweet summer child just didn't know the meaning of fear. That was until she started finding real reasons to feel it. It was about a week after she set out that I started getting multi-paragraph texts. She had made it a hundred miles, or at least she thought she had. According to her, nothing here looks like it's supposed to look, so it's hard to tell. She never explained what she meant by that, but instead started telling me about all the horrible things she hears at night. And that night stays too long now. And how she wished she ate less than they gave her. And that the buildings weren't fun anymore. The messages became less and less coherent the more forward she went. Some of what she said sounded like the tales we told each other growing up, but far more of it was unfamiliar. And so much more disturbing than she could have come up with on her own. I really don't know what to do. The location updates have stopped but I'm still getting messages. Even so, this just isn't like her. I know they're only supposed to be stories, and it's just a silly game, but I can't help but worry. And that last superstition I shared has me the most worried of all. You see, of all the strange and impossible messages I got from Kat these past couple days, the most alarming one said. I broke the record. No going back.